Hey everybody, Texas Stroker here, Lance's Performance Shop, LoneStarMopars.com. It is just about 11. We've dropped all the way down to 82, which is fantastic. <laughs> so, if you think 11 and 82, that's, that doesn't seem that bad. Well, it's 11 p.m., so uh, we're coming off uh, around 100 and 203 today. And we just took a look at the Icon Deep metric impact sockets i have tried to find those for forever finally was able to do so something else that i had wanted to get since i saw it come out didn't take near as long to make happen <laughs> and, uh, it might just be controversial i don't know i'm not sure how well it's gonna fit but i'll go ahead and try to get it down here it is daytona three ton ratcheting jack stands the retail price on this is roughly 45 bucks i picked these up with a 20 percent off coupon they screwed up and gave me 25 again i'm not going to complain <laughs> and, uh, got them for what i consider a great price now uh, these were so new that my store didn't have them out yet it was something they had to go into the back for i'm getting good about that i go there so soon that they've got it but they don't even have it stocked yet so i guess uh, first dibs if you will pick these up i think one or two weekends ago don't hold me to it but i wanted to get them opened up so i can get the box cut down and so i can use them but these are of course daytona's three ton heavy duty jack stands yes i'm aware i know everything that went on with their jack stand failures and everything i can also tell you i've had really good luck with my daytona jack that i don't think i've ever made a video on uh, that thing has become my number one most frequently used jack and these stands I've gotten to investigate. They've had the black version out for quite a while, obviously. They seem pretty solid, pretty robust from what I've been able to tell in store. And quite frankly, I was in need of some more jack stands. This is a fantastic price for what I think is a good pair and they look good. Personally, with jacks and jack stands, I like visibility. Uh, yeah, black, you know, it kind of goes with everything, whatever. But uh, when I have my Craftsman 3 ton, those are my only 3 ton jack stands, by the way, the Craftsman. Uh, if you've seen me do enough of the like automotive videos, you've probably seen them here and there. Uh, they're black. They do have the yellow upright, which is super nice because that helps me see them. When I get under a vehicle, you kind of lose track of where they are. And if you've ever like swung around on a creeper <laughs> to a jack stand, it's not fun. Uh, I also like to be able to scan under the vehicle, you know, and like easily spot the jack stands. That's where like your orange, if you wonder like why I got an orange jack, that's part of the reason. Uh, also, they didn't have blue at the time, but I'm, I'm okay with the orange one. Obviously, they very well could expand to include more colors here. Uh, but when the blue ones came out, I thought, you know what, I need them. <laughs> and uh, not because they're blue, but because like I've got some stuff going on and I'm going to need more jack stands than I currently have. Uh, here at the end of the video, I'll pull out some of the stuff that I've got, and you'll kind of see why these are an upgrade, at least for me personally. Uh, keep in mind, I am a guy that works without a lift, right? I don't have a four-post or a two-post. Like, I'm I'm still jack and jack stand guy, so uh, that's kind of uh, the limits, obviously. Would I love to have a lift? Yes, but I don't, so I work with what I've got, and in this case, I was needing something additional, so... Uh, selling points, they are heavy duty. It's kind of hard for you to see this, I don't care. I don't know how much people want to read along with me. They claim double locking mobility pin for extra safety and security. I've played with that in the store before on the black pairs. Uh, seems decently robust and it's a step up. Uh, it's also just kind of an additional safety, if you will. Uh, there's a cast iron ratcheting bar. Heavy duty reinforced steel base. Again, I've checked the welds. I've looked at how they're formed. I'm pretty comfortable with it. Uh, ideal for auto shop, farm, and truck service. Uh, they claim that these will comply with AM, ASME and PASE. Uh, never really, might be the first time I've seen PASE. I guess it's portable. That's uh, getting to be more and more popular. You know, like used to, you'd have to go to the tire shop. Now like a van comes to you. We don't have that here, of course. I would probably use it if we did. Uh, eventually, I'd love to have my own like, equipment to mount and balance tires. The end goal for me is kind of self-sufficiency. Uh, if we look there, your max height, this will be critical for some of you, particularly if you're doing like lifted trucks or Jeeps or something. 16 and 7 eighths and the minimum height, which is gonna be important for some of you with, you know, like uh, low slung sports cars, 11 and 3 eighths. So 11.375 and 16.875 if you will. 
Now, instead of boring you with unboxing this thing, I'm just gonna go ahead and do that. Uh, pesky side panel has a different shot for you, so <laughs> we'll not get to it just yet. But right there, it's a better, easier to understand dimension, so low point to high point. Also, base dimensions could come into play for some people. So, 6 and 7 16 by 7 and 3 8. So, your short side with a seam just shy of about six and a half if you will and then uh, right here seven and three eighths your wide side without the seam that's going to be just shy of seven and a half again maximum height of 16 and seven eighths minimum 11 and three eighths kicking it up you can kind of see it in action uh, other selling points are the same <laughs> i'm hoping that there's not another side panel that's different no, we are golden. So I'm going to get these out of the box. We'll showcase them. We'll compare them. It's getting to be pretty hot in here, and there's still that, like, unknown hornet thing flying around, in addition to June bugs pouring in. Now there's crickets as well, apparently. That's the downside of being out here at nighttime, and I do have the door down, for those curious. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and get these opened up, and I'll kind of compare and contrast them with what I've got. It's not going to be a great comparison, but it's better than nothing. And then when you will see these utilized will be will be the automotive videos. I don't really want to tell you what I'll be putting on it, but you'll see it in due time. So uh, we will use them. Obviously, if these fail, <laughs> I'll be pretty irate and ticked off, and uh, you will know about it. But if they're also just decent and get the job done, uh, you'll see that as well. So with that said, I'm going to cut into them. We'll take a look at the actual product, and we will go from there. All right, so all we've done is cut the tape. It's important to me to kind of showcase how things are packed. And they've got the base insulated quite nicely. Obviously, we're going to assume that these are stacked. Hopefully, they don't scuff them up too bad. If there's any scuffing going on, we want to be the ones that do it. <laughs> so I'll get this pulled out, and we will take a look at them out of the box. I lied. I didn't know it was going to be packed so nicely. And I want to highlight this. So I thought they were anchored in place. They're not, obviously, based on that falling like it's done twice in a row. But note that the cast iron pegs are actually in cardboard as well so super cool little nice touch there i've said it for years i still stand by it when things are packed well when time was spent to pack something decently make it all fit make sure it doesn't rub you know get your bubble wrap everything do what you can to protect your product that you should be proud of uh, case in point even though these are jack stands this is a pretty heavy box especially by harbor freight standards little things like that give the customer you know like peace of mind as you're unboxing that's not always the case style villa has <laughs> proven that wrong you get like an envelope you know a little like plastic bag you know whatever you buy is in a plastic bag uh clearly there are exceptions but for the most part when you get something like this it's just a little peace of mind it's nice to see and i thought that was worth showcasing as well so i'll get them out for real this time and we'll take a gander at what we've got all right i promise this is the last time it has to be because there's only one thing left to extract but this cardboard here that's in a temple shape pyramid whatever you want to call it what is it doing you ask yourself it's shielding that from being sandwiched over the other one if you're going to store these with the uh, cast iron out i don't know who would do that but if you are that person there's a little piece of cardboard that you can actually utilize to make that happen. So, that's, if you're in tight confines, it actually might be worthwhile to consider that. Otherwise, it's just kind of weird. I've never seen it done. I don't think I'll do it, but is worth mentioning. So, let's get this out, and we will seriously take a look at the stands themselves. All right, so here we are, finally, free of the cardboard. I will highlight this. A little uh, stand actually came wrapped in cardboard and bagged. Again, super nice little touches like that. I gotta say, these seem to be decent, especially again for the price point. 45 standard price for two stands, that's like 22-ish, you know, a piece. Uh, factor in getting these on sale, that's just a really good buy for a three-ton stand. So, uh, the things extra on this, you'll note we've got a rubber pad on the handle here. It says Daytona, if anyone cares. Uh, this would be our ratcheting mechanism. Uh, looking at the seam side, the welds actually look pretty good. Again, no globs. It looks like they have good penetration. They've got nice powder coat on them. When we slide this up, again, you can actually see a nice little touch here. These are gusseted in the corners. Obviously, that'll help with loads from spreading over time. That's another step you don't necessarily have to do. Another reinforcement. We've actually got the spread right here. You'll note the seam is tack welded at this point, or I guess that's just a bigger... 
bigger blob, if you will. Looks like they did run a bead on the inside, uh, both sides, so that's pretty cool. And then the bead here on that reinforcement tab is also, I gotta say, pretty solid. Uh, the green sticker there shows quality control pass, so that is a good thing to see, I suppose. Although I'm not sure what criteria goes into that, it's at least, at least present for peace of mind. If I flip this around to the front side, what's that dangling jangling, you say? Well, and then we got some keychains present. <laughs> what we have is sort of a split ring here that runs through the stand at this position. We then have a little uh, sort of keyed, funky shaped thing there, right? And then we've got the pin for the flip side. So uh, this would sort of be the setup. You would have this obviously slide through. It's just easier to demonstrate here. Really hard to see it with it all black. Well, that would pass through on that front. Now, coming to the business side, you'll note you've got your stop tab. That should technically, you know, when you get the rod in, bend it. This is our pegs right here. It's going to actually orient like this uh, because we want to face the pole. Well, that's the piece moving in there, right? So, this is how we would climb up and down, adjust our height, but Nice touch that they have three tons stamped there. I wouldn't mind seeing it on both sides, but that's just kind of a moot point. So technically we come in and we set this guy up. We drop him down. He's in place. We want to ratchet up one. Boom. And at this point in time, you know the drill. You kind of got to go back to preschool and match your shapes. <laughs> if we do it correctly, we should see this guy come through the other side. And I'll spin it around now for you. We got the objective complete, as you can see here. Again, this being our keyed side here uh, with the split ring in place. And then this one would come along and we would simply tuck it down like so. Let's see if, again, this is like really hard to see. Something I've got to say would have been nice if they're going to do these in black, which makes more sense. Maybe make that peg blue. And the reason I say that is just like looking through the camera anyway, it's like stupid hard to see that tiny little hole. So this is your setup. This obviously is what's holding it primarily, uh, our little jack rod. And then here we've got the extra safety of the key. So all in all, a great looking stand that seems to be well made. Again, you can kind of see the weld here when we enter sort of the cross section from our pyramid. And what I'm going to do is start... Uh, let me, give me a second, I'm, I'll just go grab both of them, how about that? We'll compare it to two other stands. Alright, there's just really not a good way to showcase stuff like this on this bench with a tripod, but obviously the Daytona, brand new, shiny, pretty over here, and then the tried and true Craftsman. This is like my heavy duty jack stands, if you will. You will note the similarities. Obviously here, the sticker, in fact, is not like covering an open hole like we would have in this case. It's legitimately over stamped steel, right? So that is a solid piece, whereas this one's cut out that adds a little bit of lightweight, maybe it's a little easier to carry. You'll note on the Daytona, if I tweak it for you, you'll see that little triangle there, that's our reinforcement bracket. And then right here, we have no reinforcement bracket. So you could test and argue that obviously this one's filthy. That's the other thing, it's black, trust me, this is just some uh, years and years. I've had these, man. Probably since I was like 15, maybe a little earlier, 16-ish, 15 to 16, I would say. So they've been with me a while now. Uh, you can probably tell. <laughs> so the mechanism, the concept, obviously not much has changed. Now here's a stop tab on this one. And I think you can actually see that. Again, these are a little taller than the Daytona. And then coming around, you can see on the jack rod, we don't have the padded handle. But if we come up, We'll extract this guy. This is the Craftsman one. Obviously, she's been painted. She's, she's had some vehicles land on her. It is stamped as well. This is taller, but I feel like it's lighter. Wait, let me add gun safety pin. Already inconveniencing my life. <laughs> but hopefully you saw that. I just ripped the safety pin out. Now I'm going to do the same thing real quick. Okay. So if you're thinking like, man, that Craftsman's a little bit bigger. I swear this is heavier. I'm not going to get a scale out, but I truly believe that this is a heavier uh, cast iron rod compared to this one. 
Here they are side by side. Again, you can easily see the similarities. There's sort of a strengthening rib here. I'm not quite sure what the logic is on that one. The teeth, if we line them up, they're almost identical, just a little bit different and kind of like a half pattern, if you will. So I guess the Craftsman is a more extreme jump. If you note that yellow makes it really easy to tell, but like I'll line up these teeth perfectly. And when you look at it, there's just not near as much space present on the uh, Daytona one. So the Daytona, you're going to kind of be able to dial it in a little better. The Craftsman, you'd be able to lift a little bit more. Case in point, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine different positions unique on the Daytona. The Craftsman, which is a bit longer, you have one, two, totally where this one's not present, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So you're only adding one position, shockingly. But again, that's in part just because there's more space between these two. The Craftsman may not be everyone's first choice, but it was my only jack stand for quite a while. <laughs> Obviously, I needed more than two. And my choice to replace those was like some cheap ones from AutoZone. Uh, we'll get those up here in just a second. But what I'm wanting to do is probably stupid. <laughs> so I'm going to take the Daytona rod. Oh, it's actually wider. Interesting. This is another thing. So these, let's flip these around. I could measure this and we could see some things we're not going to. The Craftsman was an I-beam down here on the bottom. This is actually just rounded over all the way. I was going to drop this into the Craftsman, but if you look at the Craftsman, you'll note this is pretty thick here. And if we bring the Daytona over, that is not near as thick as the Craftsman. Obviously the Craftsman is built a little differently. Uh, it's kind of designed, I guess, for a higher lift, although 13 and 7 16 to 21 inches. So again, it's kind of like ideal for trucks, I would say. Maybe the Daytona comes out with an expanded range. This could also be dumb. We're going to test it. It just won't fit. The I-beam is just too big. So they are, are going to have to continue to coexist independently, I guess we will say. So let's get this guy back in. Drop him down all the way and up one. Spin it. And I do apologize. I didn't grab the other one. We're going to do that right now. All right. Off to the side again with the Daytona. And here comes that one. That's right. This, I actually have four of these, believe it or not. And they have some of the features the Daytona has and a lot that they don't. So we're going to go. It's basically an A-frame construction. This actually has the gussets across all four sides. If you're curious what's going on here. Well, this sock is a poor man's way of protecting the finish on things. Now, the biggest, most glaring difference on these, these are Laren, Lauren, not quite sure how to pronounce it. They are two ton. So Craftsman and the Daytona, three ton. These are two ton. These are the good ones, okay? The other ones that have a bunch of like overspray and grease on them, they're currently under the duster on the front end. So uh, they've been hanging out there for a while. Where the Craftsman basically has no safety, these do have a safety. So I'll go ahead and uh, pull my fancy sock off the top. And basically this is it. This is probably shortly after I got the Craftsman's right. You've got your little cotter pin here and then we simply slide this out. You're all familiar with this design. <laughs> oh, that's a spider egg, dadgum. That's a good thing to know, I suppose. So we'll drop this down. And boom, that's it. That's the difference there. Two ton versus three ton. Let me see if I can backstab this one. Not sure if we can. Boom, still got it. <laughs> and, uh, I gotta say, for being two ton stands, one, these are pretty light. They're easy to maneuver. Uh, obviously, this is just one hand, thumb, and index finger. We can manhandle them. The biggest thing, though, aside from their ease of movement, is they've been good. Like, I've had these now for... Man, probably close to 20 years, I would say. The Craftsman again go way back prior than that, but these I've had for at least like 20 years and they just, they've worked. So usually the Duster and the Challenger is where these two wind up, but uh, 
you know, <laughs> it's what it is. And if you're like, man, you know, I just threw away a bunch of socks. Well, you're crazy because once socks gets holes, they're, you know, maybe not something you should wear with your shoes, but they become excellent jack stand covers if you were unaware. So what I typically like to do, I simply get the sock over the top <laughs> And then I wad it up because you've got all that extra material in the uh, sole and the heel or the toe to provide for more cushion, right? So <laughs> that's my story. I'm sticking to it. Uh, but I will show you an alternative, which is right here. Now, somewhere in this shop, I intended to grab them. I have no clue. Here they are. Dead gun. I've got these guys right here. Uh, this goes back again pretty old. Sadly, that's not going to fit. It's a little bit too... That's the problem I had with these. They didn't ever really fit anything good. But I picked these up, and these are from Pittsburgh, and I don't know if they're going to fit. Uh, they claim that they're new as well. I could have sworn they had these. Maybe they didn't. But it's just two-piece rubber stand pads, slip and oil resistant. It's going to prevent scratches. So think of this as like the fancy uh, exotic way of doing what I do with a sock. And they claim it fits most three and six ton stands, so there's no real extra information on the back side. We'll get our card here and see if we can cut into it. Now I'm curious if anyone else does what I do with the socks or if that's just like a me thing. It works really well, I have to say. Like, if you think, I'm not going to buy those Pittsburgh things and I bet they don't fit what I've got, well, probably right. <laughs> You can totally do it with a sock. So I did over the years try several times. Like I would at random when I thought about it, like pick up something like this or these red ones. And it just nothing ever really fit right. If you note on those Laren stands, if you paid attention, it was almost just like a V formation. It wasn't this fancy notch. So I'm kind of thinking this is too thin for our... Yeah, that ain't happening. So let me pull this out and I'll show you what it is. So here it is. This is what we've got. This is this side. It's just, I guess I could stretch it. Like, I mean, if I don't stretch it, I'd never use these anyway. Well, sweet. It doesn't really fit correctly, but you can manhandle it and make it fit. <laughs> I think that's what I'm going to do because, I mean, I bought these and I can't really... I guess I could probably take them back. The manager's pretty good to me, but there it is. That's our, our new fancy setup here, so cool. <laughs> Always the other thing I will leave with you, regardless of what stand you're using, what jack you're using, if they're aluminum, if they're super good value, if they look great and they're a color that you love, if they're hideous and a color that you hate. This goes back to something I was taught when I was like 15. Jack your vehicle up, always put stands under it, but before you go under it, shake it, okay? Lower the jack just a little bit and have it on the stands, and that doesn't mean it's secure. You want to shake it, you want to rock it. I go to both, fin and typically, you know, you jack up the front end only. So like if you're doing an oil change or something, get it up, get it on your stands, come to the front fender, passenger side, rock it. Go back towards the cowl, rock it. Go to the driver's side, rinse and repeat. Stand above the wheel and just shimmy the car. If the car is going to fall, you want it to fall at that point. You do not want it to fall when you're underneath it, okay? If it's a deal where you come out super late like I am right now and you just want the car ready to go, you know, Sunday morning or Saturday morning for whatever you're going to do, jack it up, get it on stands, if you're going two or four or whatever, Make sure it's solid. Leave it up. Just have your car floating overnight. And if it's going to fall, it's far better off that it falls with you not underneath it. Uh, oil pans, headers, things like that can be replaced. You cannot. So always remember that. Uh, I know you're in a hurry a lot of times. You don't have a ton of free time, maybe. Don't skimp on safety. Uh, again, you don't get to replace your skull. You know, once you crack that thing open, it's pretty much game over. You lost. So... Uh, again, keep that in mind. Always be smart. Always be safe, uh, regardless of what you're using, whether it's, you know, $300 jack stands off of the snap-on truck, whether it's stuff from Walmart or Harbor Freight, 
the best jack stands in the world don't mean anything if you don't have them positioned properly. All right, so always, always set things up, check it. Something like this is nice because you can protect your finish. You know, I work on a lot of kind of like higher end old cars, you know, and if people have like powder coated the frame or it's a full off restoration, you know, the last thing you want to do is be that guy that you tear up their K member with your jack and then you come in with your jack stands and you tear that finish off too. So, granted, a lot of people that have you do work, you know, don't ever check that stuff. They're oblivious to it, but you know, it's got timed out there. But you know it, it would haunt you. Do it right, do it smart, do it safe, call it good. So, 45 bucks for this pair of stands. I gotta say, the blue looks phenomenal. Again, hopefully, the Daytona line, maybe they expand it out. Maybe if you're like the sublime green guy or you're like the orange dude, you know, maybe they'll do more stands. Personally, the one thing, the one knock I really have on the Craftsman, granted, you know, the jack rod itself is high-vis yellow, safety, caution yellow, whatever you want to call it, it's not like neon, but the stands are black, and that's cool, but I kind of, I can't explain it aside from it's easier to know it's there and I'm less likely to whack it with my head, but just having something that pops under the vehicle I think is a nice touch, and I don't mean that aesthetically, I just mean that from like a safety standpoint, <laughs> so... Uh, I got so used to having like a bad creeper with dead wheels and casters that you know I just you can't ever move anywhere too fast but I'll tell you right now you know that I've got a creeper that's got wheels that go uh, I you tend to start taking picking up some speed under a vehicle <laughs> uh, let's say just theoretical example if you're like pulling a transfer case you're dropping the drive shaft or something uh, even if you're like mocking up an exhaust if something comes and it's cascading down towards you and you have a chance to escape or react you're gonna push off quickly and you would almost be better off in some cases of letting like three inch exhaust tubing hit you versus slamming into a jack stand maybe it saves you a headache <laughs> literally in this case maybe it doesn't I don't know but personally I love the aesthetic of these these have the added safety feature uh, so it's sort of like a hybrid between my cheap Laren and the Craftsman which like I said some of you may hate the Craftsman some of you may knock what I've got in the two-ton they've been with me 15 20 plus years and they work that's all I've got for jack stands and they've done everything I've needed them to and I can't really complain about it so and that is that. I'm excited to add these to the shop. I very realistically will probably, I'm going to use these on a front end first and make sure I kind of like them for sure in use. You know, on bench is great, but if they suck under vehicle, I don't want anything to do with them. So if I like these, I'll probably, when there's another sale, grab a second set. And then I'd be able to kind of have the exact same. That's one of the reasons I have four of the Larens. I couldn't get the Craftsman ones anymore. Like they were gone. But with the Larens, I was able to come in, and I'd usually have to go up pretty high, which I prefer not to do. I'd prefer to have something like this or the Craftsman that's even taller. But uh, it's a situation where if you're going to put your car up on four stands, like let's say you're going to do some serious work, or you know it's going to be up, you're doing some resto, body panels, whatever, I would much rather have four of these or four Larens or four Craftsmen versus like two Daytonas and two Larens. Even if you can like balance them out exactly the same or you need a little rake or something, uh, maybe you're cutting out, you know, trunk floor or something, you want the back up a bit more. It's just better to have it level, the same thing. And that's what I intend to do. So <laughs> with that said, I don't know that many of you will have granted if I don't expedite this video some of you probably have picked this up and used them. By that point in time, they very well could have colors. I'm telling you right now when I'm recording this, this is brand new. They've had the black for a little while. But at this point in time, if you have used the Daytona 3-ton, it's probably black. How long have you used it? How do you like it? Have you had any issues? Is it a huge upgrade? I have to say, like... They're fairly robust. They've got reinforcements. The welds... There's nothing, like, alarming to me. Uh, keep in mind that Craftsman was considerably thicker up top, but it also adds quite a bit of height. Uh, it's sort of more intended, again, like a truck application, if you will. But uh, With that said, that's about all I've got. I can't really comment more until we use them. If you want to see these suckers used, be on the lookout for some of my automotive content. I'm not sure there's much we could do with these on the truck, unless we, like, take the wheels and tires off and it's down on the ground. 
but with the cars yes these will come into play you'll see them there and uh, like i said i just i can't say oh these are great buy them because i haven't used them initial impressions thumbs up <laughs> long-term use i can't sit here and lie to you i have no idea so this does feel decently robust i guess it's a little safe safer um you know the Laren one is a pin because these are drilled through they don't have the teeth for the ratcheting effect but basically if you couldn't tell what's happening here uh, we've just got it set up and like see how that works it fits in the keyway there so it's sort of like i said you've got the pawl that in theory you know if we just stop right here this pawl should hold everything you throw at it this kind of makes it a solid piece as if the pawl wasn't there and it was just stationarily built and welded at this height so just a little extra safety for you so with that said your thoughts and opinions always appreciated and again i get it i know i'm very well aware about the jack stands failing there were lots of stands made by that company <laughs> uh, harbor freight of course as usual takes the brunt of things you know when it goes wrong but i think these are pretty well built again i'd examined the black ones for quite a while i'm glad i didn't buy them because i would much rather prefer this i'm uh, getting to the point now where this project is about to you know start up and i needed them so i've got them i'm happy and we'll see how they do and like i said you very well could see i don't ever do a full unboxing when we get like a second or a repeat offender i do try to mention it and that's really the best compliment you can give a tool uh, is if you go in and like you buy uh, say an engine stand and you took a chance on an OTC one that costs a little bit more and you get it and you love it and then you need another engine stand the best thing you can really do to sell someone that this guy believes in the tool and loves it is you buy the second one right that's kind of where it gets good so <laughs> if, if these work out well for me with what I've got planned tentatively then yeah you're probably going to see another pair show up so with that said, I'll quit rambling. Thanks so much for watching. Hope you have yourself a fantastic weekend. LoneStarMopars.com is the website. You can find us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, all three at Lone Star Mopars. If you have not subscribed, I encourage you to do so. If you jump your charger across the creek, hit the Dixie horn as you're going. <laughs> and uh, have the stars align. YouTube just might let you know that we've got new content every saturday morning also wednesdays as well 9 a.m texas time on both fronts and good lord i was i was here trying to be cool and we're just not making that happen uh like i said these are brand new and of course we get it now so uh, again my only real complaint is this part right here if that pin was blue or even like yellow complimentary you know high vis color it's just sort of hard to see granted this is from a distance i'm like back here it's up there i've got the camera here that probably has a lot to do with it but just like a bench complaint is just it's hard to see that hole with the pin so color the pin or color this i think this would be easier to color since you've got this as black but that's just my thoughts small complaint something you could easily paint that or shoot it with some spray bomb you know but uh anywho battery is about dead i'm gonna get inside get a drink work out shower and get out here a little earlier tomorrow so Hope you all have a great weekend and I will catch you back here for more action from the shop.